Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video looking at network diagrams, um, a common and popular project management tool. Uh, we're going to be looking at the purpose of network diagrams uh, as well as walking through the process of creating a basic network diagram uh, to demonstrate how you could do so for your project. Uh, so a network diagram is just a, a graphical representation of the activities and tasks that need to be done for a project during the execution phase. Um, so we need uh, certain inputs for this, so this should be ideally a, a work breakdown structure so we know exactly what the scope of the project is, so what activities have to be included, uh, which activities, which, what any activities that aren't included in the work breakdown structure are outside of the scope of the project, so we're not going to be attempting those. Um, and also an activity list which provides uh, more information about those activities to enable us to create a network diagram. Uh, so network diagrams are really quite useful, particularly for sequencing activities and for allowing us to understand uh, which kinds of activities are going to be running concurrently, uh, which kinds of activities have to be run in a particular sequence, uh, and they also, quite importantly, allow us to then undertake um, critical path analysis to identify which path through the project, so which sequence of activities are critical for us to be able to finish the project without any delays to the timeline. So if we start just by looking uh, or creating a basic network diagram, uh, so we're going to start with the uh, work breakdown structure so we can understand uh, which activities have to be included. So as a refresher, we're going to take uh, the activities or items at the lowest level of every branch on the uh, uh, WBS and put these into an activity list. Uh, so we have this activity list with four identified activities uh, and we have for, our, uh, uh, for the needs of the network diagram, we need to pay particular attention to the preceding activities to allow us to sequence the network diagram properly. Um, so we need to abide by the conventions. Uh, so these are the network diagram movement goes from left to right. So the start of the project, so your opening activity will be on the left hand side and then your closing activity will be on the right hand side. Uh, and we need to run activities in parallel where possible, uh, only having activities uh, sequenced where there is a preceding activity. So if you have uh, three activities uh, and they do not need to be run in sequence, we're not going to be placing them on the network diagram one after another, but instead we're going to be placing them alongside each other to indicate that these can be run in any sequence or they can be run uh, in parallel, run at the same time. So we're only going to be placing activities one after another if they have to be run in that particular sequence. So we can go back to our uh, activity list and we see from these four activities uh, we have three which need to be run after uh, a previous activity. So activity B has to be run after A, activity C has to be run after A as well and activity D can be run after B and C are finished. So this means activity A is going to be our starting activity and then activity D is going to be our finishing activity. So we can uh, put our four activities um, on paper as, as individual activities for our network diagram. Uh, and then because B and C have to be run after A and D has to be run after B and C, if we sequence it, we get something like this. Uh, B and C can be run in parallel. They can be run at the same time. Uh, whereas D has to only run after B and C are complete. So if we add arrows to this, which a network diagram needs to show the direction and the relationship between different activities, uh, we have a nice simple network diagram that looks akin to this, B and C following A and then D following B and C. So this is a very simple network diagram, but if we look at some other examples, we can see how useful it can really be. So this is another very nice and straightforward network diagram. So in this case, this is cooking lasagna. Uh, but we can see that with cooking, certain activities absolutely need to be in sequence. Uh, so for example, you cannot bake the lasagna until you have uh, the las lasagna properly layered up. You've added the sauce, you've browned the meat, you've put the cheese filling in. 
Um, so that has to be run after a number of other activities. But we can see that they are also different branches emerging. Uh, so uh, boiling the noodles and draining the noodles can be run at the same time as browning the meat and adding the sauce. Uh, and both of those can be run at the same time as mixing the cheese filling. So that's the benefit of representing our project in this kind of network diagram. We can easily see uh, which activities um, can really be run at the same time. So we can really go for two different approaches. We can either minimize resource usage by sequencing it in a longer project timeline, uh, or we can have higher resource usage, uh, but a shorter time frame by having all of the parallel activities running at the same time. And we can see how you can have even a complex project or an increasingly complex project uh, represented in this way uh, where we can really map out all of the uh, uh, activities um, in various different sequences uh, to give a really good graphical representation of your project overall. Uh, so this example is for a construction project uh, and again we can see various different activity streams uh, we can see that laying the sheetrock is uh, a bottleneck so we identify well actually um, this activity uh, can only be done when several so all the four previous streams have all been completed and that leads to two new branches and then ending with installing the flooring uh, so again, that's a, a useful way of being able to visualize what the bottlenecks are, uh, how many multiple streams are possible at any one time, uh, so we can have an idea of resource usage as well. Uh, and once we have this, we can actually run critical paths as well, so we can identify which of these different branches uh, will end up being the critical path through the project. Uh, but that is a, another video which you can view to understand how to calculate critical path.